Okay, so we're ready to start. The recording is on. <coughs> I'll not do a lot of lecturing for enumeration, so I'm going to lead you through a code example that uses the enumeration structure to create a kind of a card selector. And as I mentioned, the idea today will be that he, one of the groups in the class is going to try to figure out what in the class is about and present at some point. So I'm skip over, skipping over this part. Um, and the other group in the class is going to do an independent research where you have the book, but you will research the topic of uh, generating um, Java, Java documentation and then you. you figure out how to present, so a little bit of group work, okay? And uh, what I will present today is a little bit of information about enumerations, uh, and then we're going to call an example with enumerations together. If you're planning to do the extra credit, the extra credit is going to use uh, enumeration structure to set up your game players, so that's why this might be useful in addition that you just need to know about it. All right, so an enumeration is um, a structure which is the keyword for it is enum, and we add it to our projects the same way we have classes or interfaces, and it allows you to enumerate it's something like between a constant and a variable. You can only have so many different constraint types of something that are part of the enumeration. So, one good example here is if you have a if you have to declare a shipping type, should this be a variable or a constant, or what, how would you think about it? And it's helpful to structure it as an enum, because then you can have, uh, you're constrained by the type, but you can only have so many different types within it. In other words, it structures you so that you can't have shipping type, uh, of type, uh, you know, book or something that just doesn't make logical sense. And in this case here, we declare an enumeration shipping type and it is going to support these three types of shipping. It's like a drop down list within a program. If it helps to think about it like that, then that's pretty much it. It only that's right, it constrains you only to so many um, possible choices you can. Right? And how would you use an enumeration? Well, you can, for example, so it is a type, so you can declare a variable of this type. And then you set it up for, in this case, with shipping type uh, UPS second day. Mm -hmm. Because it's a type, you can also pass it to, um, to a, as an argument to a method. So, for example, here with the get shipping amount, you, are, you can start out with a certain shipping amount, and then using the enumeration, you control how much you charge your customers. And that's, I think it's reasonable to imagine that something like that is how the business rules are set up in Amazon, who actually uses uh, Java, so they can control their shipping costs, whether there is Prime and so forth. So maybe with Amazon, you might also have Prime. Your enumeration might have some additional subtypes. All right, and also you can call a method that contains um, that is past an enumeration. And so it turns out that even though the, um, the three, in this case, we have three uh, different enumerations inside, they are actually indexed 0, 1, and 2, as you might not be surprised. But you can't use, or you shouldn't use, I should say, the numeric value. You actually should use the actual definition of the enumeration. So that's the proper way of, if you wanted to reference it. Don't, have, don't reference it by the index, even though there is an index available to it. So there are a couple uh, methods that uh, the enumeration that are available, there are more, um, and you can look them up with the Oracle documentation. In fact, I'll probably do this. Uh, two of them are the ordinal and the name. And the ordinal is actually going to allow you to use the zero, one, two. So the ordinal number corresponding to the enumeration. All 
right, and so I'm going to look up the documentation for enumeration on Oracle, and after that we're going to code an example using enumeration. Okay, so as, as so always, there is you know a lot a lot of information, maybe too much, but the way that the Oracle documentation describes it is a special type data type that enables a variable to be set to predefined constants, which is what we discussed. Another example here, which is good, is with a compass. It can only have four possible. Well, I guess depending. Maybe it can have with a southwest and so forth. But that's one example when you might want to use it. And the explanation here with the days of the week. Mondays are bad. Where is today? Wednesday. So this took us to the tutorial's point, which is fine. And as I mentioned, it returns the ordinal of the relation constant, which is the position starting with zero. the concept behind enumerations and let's go ahead and call an example together if you please bring your bring up your uh, eclipse do you have any questions so far yes is there a different function with the genome than with an like an array list Sorry? Is there like a different like function with the number and array list as far as just like graphic stuff on it? For graphics, graphics Well, you have to have a graphics library which no, you have said grabbing grabbing stuff. Oh grabbing stuff from it? Oh, yeah. Um well you just have to specify the enumeration name dot the the specific value. Um and then you can use, I mean, that's how you grab it. You can use this format to grab it or to set it or to use it. Um, there are also, there are also runtime constants, so you can't modify them. So they're always going to have that value. And so that way they're slightly more efficient because they'll be parsed out at compile time instead of runtime. So hmm? Okay, let's do an example here and it will show us maybe that will answer your question better. Okay, so a new project, and this will be the um, card sweet. Who pronounce it sweet or sweet? Shoot. Cast shoot tester. Card suit tester, we're going to use the enum for us to store our suit because how many there are only so many types of suits that cards can have, so that makes sense to use it in this way. And let's create um, this. We're going to have a card package. And we're going to have a UI package. In the card 
package, we're going to have, we're going to add a class card and we're going to add an enum so you can see here is the first time we're adding an enum and here is the how you do it it's the same as we have been adding classes or interfaces I'm sorry where do we put it? Uh, yeah, this is going to go inside the card package. So in the card package, we have the card class and the suit enumeration. So um, add that. A suit. And then in the UI, we're just going to have our main. There we go. And this is the setup for our program. So let's go ahead and add the enum first. So I guess I should, let's, uh, let me tell you what this program does, first of all, so that you have an idea what you're working on. So it's, um, the program is going to have a model of card class, and a, a suit, which is an enum is going to work with a card class. And then from the main, we're going to test our cards. Um, the example we're going to do is going to be that we essentially hard code the value of the suit and the number and then our program checks for that and gives us the result and then of course the program can be extended to get the user input or to randomize it so it's sort of a template that you might want to expand um, if you wanted to play with some kind of card games and use it as a base okay so that's what it's going to uh, do Going in the enum, it's already, the code stuff is available for us. So all we have to do is now specify the types that are going to be inside the enum. And um, some of you are probably card players. So what kind of suits should we support here? Um, it's hearts, diamonds. Okay. And uh, note that we have uh, capital. We should use capital case for the names of the for the names that go inside the enum constant. So spades, hearts, uh, diamonds, and clubs. And that's it for this class, for this enum. So far so good? So you've been able to transition from the previous class, okay? Yeah, I thought it was, I didn't last class. Not very bad. I mean, it means not bad, it's just a lot of typing. Okay. Yeah. So next we're going to go in the card class, and this class is going to define this class defines a plain card. So we're going to have, our card is going to have two properties. Can you tell me what they might be, the card players? What do we need to have? Student value. Student value. So we're going to have a private. You're yeah, you're into cards, aren't you? <laughs> I am literally carrying a deck right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. So if we do a visual representation. That's awesome. That's good. <laughs> okay, so the suit is a type as we learned the enum, so using the enum type suit. And, uh, and it's in the same package, the enum is in the same package, so it's not, um, we don't have to import anything. And the uh, private and the value, and I'm going to name it 
number just because so I can follow, but essentially it is the value of the card. So I'm going to name this a number. And it's going to be an int because it's it's a whole number, so that's what makes sense to do here. We can generate the stops, but we just there's so few of them that we'll just go ahead and add our our own. So we have a public. And so sorry, look at me. Um, we're going to use the default constructor. So I'm skipping this part, and that just means that the default constructor will be called upon when we instantiate the object. And now I'm going to get the suit for the card by stating public get suit. And this is going to return suit. So that's so. So I don't know if you appreciate this, but I think I really appreciate how helpful it is to use object-oriented programming to think about how to create those programs. Because if you didn't know about um, object-oriented programming, how would you even go about creating this program, right? We're working with cards and suits, and I just think it's so nice to have this tool available. It's a lot more work if you don't have objects. Right. It's a lot more work and it's just, for me anyway, it's harder to think about. I can't yeah. even think properly about a problem, but it's so much easier to think about it if you put it in terms of objects. At least that's my experience. I feel like it's easier to come back to the code too later and be able to read it. Yeah, that's right, because it's structured well. Mm -hmm. So it's more work of prompt, perhaps, but it, it's better like this. So if we're talking about documentation later, it's more self-documented. Yeah. It is more self-documented, that's right. Okay. So we get the suit, and then we also need to set the suit. We have to have No, you don't. Oh. Thanks. So this dot suit is going to call the suit. And then we repeat for our other instance variable. So this is our card object. We want to set suit, not suite. Where is that? Set, set suit. Set suite. Set suit. You have an E at the end. In the set. Yeah. 
Okay, so th this is our cl card class. And if we ever wanted to create a game of blackjack or some other game, that that would be a good starting point. Right? You didn't uh, get that number. It's that number. Okay, so we need to have an int number. Thank you. Okay, so I think now we should be the card class is set up. Next, we are going to go in our main. Here, we need to import the. What do we need to import here? Probably the scanner too. Yeah, I meant we need, we need to import the card. Sorry. Yeah, so we need to import the enum and uh, we're going to do so by saying card.suit. And we also want to import uh, card.card. Okay, so we're going to greet, greet the user. Welcome to the speech tester. Oh, we forgot to have the main. That's right. Okay. So, do you, if you forgot to add the main as I did, then we need to add it here. That's why it's complaining. Um, and uh, did you guys add the main or no? Okay, so give me one second here. Great. And now we're going to instantiate a new car. And then we essentially going to hard code the values. And as I mentioned, as you, this is the most simple form of the program. Eventually, usually instead of hard coding those values, you would get them from the user or just get them from somewhere else. But for now, we just hard code them. So hard, uh, card dot set the suit, and we can set it to one of the types. So just whichever one you want, suit dot Let's say space. And then we're going to set the number to start set it at one for now.
And then we're going to call a methods display card, which we still need to call. So this is going to be giving us a syntax error at this point. And this is in the main. And then we're going to leave the curly brace of the main, but we're still inside the class. So we're going to add our method. And this could get going in a different file, but we can put it here. So this is going to be a public static void display card. It is going to take an object, a card object. So is everyone caught up? Any questions so far? It's pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Once we start. I, again, I think if you work in this manner, it makes it much more straightforward. OK, so how would we implement the display card? Well, we're going to display two parts of it, whether it's an ace or a king. Um, this is called the suit, right? Or And then of which, which of the so I guess I don't really know the English names for these cards, but the suit is the king, the king is the suit, or no. does the, what is that called? So uh, you've got ace through ten, jack, queen, king. Right. Those uh, are face cards. Okay, the faces. Right. We're going to display a combination of the faces and the suit. So that's what we're going to do. So, so because you use int for the number, right. jack would be 11, queen would right. be 12, king would be Okay, 12. that's exactly where, where we're heading. So these are the faces. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to do some checking here. And um, we're going to look the following get card. So, sorry, card dot dot get number. And if this number is equal to one, then what is going to be our result, Michael, or anybody yes. else? Okay, so, one is ace. And if the number is equal to 11, yeah. Could you set this up in a switch statement also? Yes, that should work as well, certainly with the older versions, with the newer version of Java. I'm not sure if it worked before Java 7, I'll have to double check that. I think it might actually because they're numbers, they're yeah. ordinals. Yeah, it, uh, it will. It will. Okay. All right. And um, so we continue on like this for a few more. Well, this is going to be the. Thirteen is the thing. The get if the value returned by get number is greater than 13, that is going to result in we're just going to say question mark. I don't know what it is.
but we haven't yet accounted for zero through sorry for I guess two to through ten or nine. Ten I think. Ten is a number in the card deck, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to now figure out how to do um, two through ten. It's actually very easy, but I'll just let you think about it for a second. Just print out the number. Just print out the number. We do it. Well, thing. maybe start with an else if, if it's between one and ten, uh, two and ten. Right. We can certainly do it in more than one way, but this seems like a really, I think that's a really easy way. So if we handle all these other cases first, then we can just say otherwise. If it's not greater than 13 and it's not one of these other numbers here, then we can just print the number itself. So these are the faces. And now we need to add to those the suits. So that's our next step. I'll wait for a moment so that everyone is caught up. And note that we were using, because we're going to be saying like ace of spades or whatever, <laughs> that's a reference to a song, right? Yeah. Ace of spades. Anyhow, I'm using print here instead of print line, right? It's because we want to put it in the same, we want to put the face, the number and the suit on the same line. So I'm using print instead of print line here. Was this a motorhead song? Or this is yeah. print? Well, there's also a real blues song with that title too. That's Ace of Spades. Mm -hmm. We have to Google this after the class. Ace of Spades motorhead, yeah. Could you show me the card flash really quick? Yeah. Wait, let, me, let me save this and see why there is an error here. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Here is the card class. Can you see okay, Mark? Okay, so we'll just give him a check from the program. Are we ready to finish our pro little program here? Yeah. Okay, so next we're going to figure out how to add the suits and uh, okay. maybe another second here Okay. <laughs> 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 
So we, if you have any syntax errors, let me know and we fix a couple of things here. Okay, have your attention again. I'm going back in the main. And so then we're printing the face, the number of the card, and then we're going to say, after all our if statements, system out, print. And then we're going to say off, just the word off. So we're going to say, since we said print line, so since we said print rather than print line, is going to say like ace space off, right? Everybody understands this. And now we're going to do our checking for the different suits. So this is what this is going to look like. So 
So if um, card, oh, I guess uh, let me mention, I saw a couple errors. You have to match your cases. It's case sensitive. So remember that if you're referring to a package, it has to match, you know, and the, if, you, if you're referring to a class, they have to match. So that might be the reason for the error. Check your cases here. Okay. So if, in this case, we're referring, what is this card referring to right here? The object, the instance of the card object, right? And now we can say get suit. Suit dot space. This will be uh, spades. And then the same else if. You better type on print on 31. Thank you. Else if card that gets you is. This is right. The hearts. Keep on repeating. Clubs. Our last one. Diamonds. And then outside of the of the condition, and then you print line and exclamation mark. So I'll let you finish. Let's test this little program. It's a lot of, I know, I'm testing the limits of uh, Eclipse, how many, how many of these can it support? Open. Oh, 
All right, let me get out of magnify so I can see what I'm doing here. All right, that's better. And here is our little tester, and it told us ace of spades. So let's see here. This was supposed to be print. And so we have set the value of the suit and the number, and based on this, it's going to test and give us the proper card information. And that might not look like much, but it's a really good setup because you can imagine that from here, everywhere you're, where you're saying system out print, if you're playing a game, when you're playing a game of cards, you need to get the cards. So you can start from here, getting the cards, and then you can do all kinds of other tasks rather than only printing the results. Uh, we can also test just changing the value, the values up here where we set them, and make sure that that works. So play with it for a moment or two. And after this, we'll take a break. <coughs> yes. Like this? Yeah. Okay. And uh, after this example, once you have it running, and if you don't have any questions, we'll take a five minute break, and then we're going to break into groups for our project. And I um, I think we, what, one other thing we didn't do is really any whiteboarding. So the group that is presenting, you, you can whiteboard it, but I'll talk about it. Let me not distract you. Let me not get ahead of ourselves here. Just so I'll finish this one and we'll talk about part two of the class. Any questions or comments on this example? Okay, a couple of hands up. So, Cliff, I guess maybe if you want to help me. Hey, so, This is exactly the same thing as in the previous example. If you're testing for something, you have to wow. add else if. If you add else, then you can't put anything there. Because else means anything else. So that's why it's complaining. And then if you say else, then it's going to be. This is sometimes it won't refresh the file or anything. That's what he said. Yeah. 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 So this is how uh, you need to put this inside this 74 because it's part of the map. Well, if you want to test it in a different suit, then this oh, is the line, line 12. Yeah, no, no, it's, <coughs> a, it's a different suit. Uh, like there's stuff called where maybe eventually you might be using the user or have a game situation. Uh, mm -hmm. So change them here, the number and, and the space, and then test it and see yeah. how it is. Uh, yeah. 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 Because yeah. usually, yeah. usually when you yeah. like do a new I consider all of the products in there to be kind of related. So it's like in a certain way. Yeah, I just made a mistake. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So take a short break if you're done and we'll reconvene in about five minutes. I think I'll stop our recording here as well. So did you feel like you have a do you feel like you were able to get a good sense of good handle of enums through this example? Yeah. All right, well, if you want more practice, do the extra credit and do the line to the sub. Yes, then. Is there a little random issue Um Yeah, I guess you could. You just have to you have three possible in this case, or four, I guess. So it, you could have, pop, it would be an integer, one of these random class, you'd use random class and set the top limit to four, and then go through the ordinal zero, one to three. Yeah, yeah, because you have to remember that, like, it's really like a literal representation of a list of numbers, zero through n. So if you want a random one within that set, you just need a value or a random one.